Cardinals Corner from Arizona Sports. Cardinals Corner from Arizona Sports with Tyler Drake and Lauren Koval. What's going on, Bird Gang? Tyler Drake here with Cardinals Corner on Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. But today we've got a special, special edition. We are joined by Monica Daniels and Kimberly Stroud, better known as the mothers of Paris Johnson Jr. and CJ Stroud. And they've got some exciting news. They've actually got a new podcast opening up. They just got it off the ground. So welcome to Cardinals Corner. I'm glad we can extend the podcasting arm to you guys. And tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yes, hi. Nice to meet you. And thank you so much again, Tyler, for having us on the show today. Uh, We're so excited. We dropped our first episode of The Mom's POV and uh, yesterday. And so that stands for the mom's point of view. And so in the world of of football or in the world of just, I don't know, athletics in general, um, sometimes the mom's perspective is, is not always heard. And so myself and Monica, some years back, we thought it would be great to create a platform where Uh, We were able to take some of the interesting things we've learned along the way, as well as um, intimate perspectives of the different things that moms face when they have a child that um, is, you know, a high achiever and and maybe on the road to a pro career. So Mm -hmm. we thought of um, myself and Monica having the same type of heart. She's so wonderful (laughs) that we would love to give back. And so we decided the Moms POV um, and and show would be a great way to do it. And we're so grateful, like you said, to get that off the ground. Yeah, definitely. So when did this all come to be? Was there a moment where you guys decided we've got to do this? Like, what was the deciding factor where you guys just decided we got to do this and do it now? Oh, wow. Kim and I, we were, again, we started our relationship and our sisterhood back at Ohio State when our sons were going through the college recruiting process. Mm -hmm. And we felt like we wanted to have a platform where we can share our story and we can encourage people and motivate others. And so we started this conversation back when the boys were Ohio State. So it's just amazing (laughs) now that we see full manifestation of this now, Um, just so, because we want to be a resource to others. Yeah. Definitely. I remember myself and Monica, um, the first person I met was her when we were, we were on a visit, myself and CJ, we were on our first visit to Ohio State and everything's so bright and there's so much going on and they were during practice and um, someone came to me and said, I really want you to meet Miss Miss Monica. She's so amazing. And so they led me over to Monica and instantly we were like two peas in a pod and we just started talking and we had so much in common with our journey that we've had with our boys and then as well as personally so we created a kinship and from there we've been just in each other's corner and rooting for each other even though our our sons play for different teams we're all still part of the football family but it it seems I feel like they play for the same team because we root for each other we do (laughs) hey that's great that's that that Ohio State blood right there yeah (laughs) exactly that brotherhood sisterhood (laughs) yeah so so speaking so speaking of the boys what uh what do they think about this what do they think about the the moms getting on the podcast and starting to talk about a little bit more of their personal side as much as your guys's personal life well I know for me CJ he's so excited and he loves Miss Monica. He calls her Miss Monica. <laughs> and he loves her. And he's like, Mom, there's nobody else that I would rather you do that with because I feel like you guys have so much in common. And then he was um, he was so excited, too, that we're able to help because mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's what this world is about. People helping people and learning from things that you go through and giving back by each one, teach one, you know, teach, teaching something, or at least giving some kind of perspective or light on a situation where you can look at it in different angles from different perspectives. No, I agree. Paris feels the exact same way. He's been rooting for Kim and I behind the scenes <laughs> yeah. for, for, I would say at least 18 months now. And yeah. he's <laughs> been there from the very beginning, just like CJ encouraging us and wanting us to use our platform because now Kim and I, we have a platform now. And so we want to use the platform that we have and just be a resource and encourage other amazing moms out there. And so we have the total support of both Paris and, and CJ. And so, and plus they're going to come on the show too. So at the end of the yeah. football, <laughs> so they'll come on the show and they will allow us to, interview them and and Paris has given us the green light and says hey mom I want you and Miss Kim to just share your story be a blessing to people don't hold back 
you know, just share. So we're excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. Uh, I guess, have they given you any any ideas of where you want to take an episode yet or, or any pointers or is it or is it very kind of fresh still and, and kind of still getting off the ground on that side of things? Yeah, well, I know CJ always says to me, he's like, mom, you're not a typical mom. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you're like, you know, you're 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 like the younger side of a mom, not saying that I am, but that's kind of what he says. <laughs> and what he means by that is like, because me and Monica, you know, we still are attached to our youth. Thank God <laughs> that we can kind of like relate a lot. You know, mm -hmm. we're not so because some people, they get this image when they think of an NFL family and they think of them as, you know, whatever their their initial thoughts are. But myself and Monica are the complete opposite. We were humble. We've been through we've been through things that would cause us only to be humble. <laughs> our boys have their journey has been so, you know, it's been a long journey, but it's it, we've learned so much through it that we have to be who we are. And so um, I think for that, like CJ's, he he's like, this is like a perfect um, form for you to kind of express. And plus, then he doesn't listen to me, you know, talk about all the things that I want changed. He's like, why don't you go do something about it then? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Monica, I know that we had talked a while back about getting this all set up and, and trying to figure out where you guys were going to get this going. But now getting that first episode down, just tell me how that went. How did you feel like the first episode went? What were some of the big takeaways? I listened to it a little bit. I thought it was a great, uh, you know, synopsis of the rookie year. I personally thought it flew by myself just covering it. <laughs> Kind of being a, that was one of my yeah. first times being at the NFL draft. And, and I was actually there when mm -hmm. CJ and Paris were showing off the Cardinals jersey and all of that. So, really? yeah, yeah, I was one Aww. of the first people to talk with, uh, <laughs> with Paris after he got drafted and CJ was right mm -hmm. there too. So, a uh, really Aww. cool experience. So, it was cool to be a part of that and kind of live that rookie yeah. year kind of that way too. Cause that was one of them, I think, believe that was my first NFL draft covering. So, uh, oh, wow. just a little, can you give anybody a little bit of a synopsis of what that first episode is and what they might get out of that? For Kim and I, it was just an op again an opportunity for us just to tell our story, and it it felt great for us to just begin to just talk and share and be truly transparent and vulnerable. Um, because sometimes, you know, you know, moms, I'm speaking to the moms out there. Yeah. Um, sometimes we have to be guarded because we're natural protectors. We want to cover our children. We want to protect yeah. them, and so. This platform um, is allowing Kim and I to be vulnerable, yeah. allowing us to be fully open and transparent so we can encourage others and let other people know that if they're going through something that they, they're not alone because yeah. maybe Monica went through it or maybe Kim went through it. Yeah. And so to me, it was just a, finally an opportunity for us to be truly vulnerable and transparent. Yes, I agree 100% with that. And I hear parents all the time, um, our moms will come to me and they'll, they just want to know they're doing it right. Yeah. You know, and I think for myself, I felt the same way as a mom, you know, you always feel like, am I, am I, you know, am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? How do, where do I fit in, in this whole jigsaw yeah. puzzle, you know? And so I think, you know, just learning from other moms that, you know, we haven't figured it all out, but have been kind of down some roads and how we've been able to navigate, not just for me, CJ and, and for Monica PJ, but also beautiful Sydney, which is um, Monica's daughter and Sierra and uh, is my daughter. And then I have two older boys and how are we able to navigate the whole family as a whole? And, yes. you know, especially when you have one that stand, you know, obviously is in the public eye. So how do you mm -hmm. keep everybody grounded? And so it's, it's such a big dynamic as a mom, what we, what we, you know, there's, you know, we're the neck, you know what I mean? And we turn the whole head, we turn the whole body. So it's like, you know, right. at the end of the day, it, that's really true. You know, we, we mm -hmm. basically, our family feeds off of us. Yeah. Definitely. Very true. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's and, and that's a really good point. I never really thought about that. Just having that family di dynamic of not, you know, CJ's up here, Paris is up here. Yeah. I mean, how do you guys navigate that on a daily basis? Oh, wow. I, I, for, for me, for our family, and we have a family group chat. So every morning, our family sends words of encouragement to one another. 
um, scriptures to one another. And then we ask each other what what needs do each other have so we can begin to support each other through prayer or if there is a physical need um, that we're able to support each other in that way. And I find that that keeps us humble. Yeah. Um, it was one of the first scriptures. Um, this is the first time I'm saying this publicly. See how vulnerable we're being? So, <laughs> so, one of the first scriptures that I taught Harris and Sydney when they were little people is that pride comes before destruction. And so uh, we are a family about, about being, have a spirit of gratitude, have a spirit of appreciation yeah. Yeah. and just giving back. And yeah. so that is our thing at, as a family. And so just having those constant communications, even if we're, because there's communication with our family every day. Um, there's yeah. not a day that our family is not in, in communication. If it's a quick phone call or if it's text messages, we're going to make sure we're communicating as a family unit so we can stay together and stay grounded. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. And I think another thing is just being there. Yeah. So like my daughter, Sierra, and my son, Asmar, they attend almost every game. So we travel <laughs> all over the States. <laughs> Monica can, can attest to that. We and, yes. and Monica also experienced the same thing. We and, and one great thing is Sierra went from putting CJ in headlocks to now she gives him hugs. So it's kind of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I, I, so listening to that first episode, I, I did hear the thing about, you know, having to have that complete sense of no. Is it, What's been one of the weirdest requests that you guys have ever gotten? <laughs> That's a good question. Tyler. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe we don't have to go that no, far. No, no, no. No. I think that's a great question. Yeah. It is. I think for me, um, I just I think the biggest thing for me is I think people feel one, that things are easy access for us. And mm -hmm. then two, that we have endless money. So yes. <laughs> so I've gotten the request of can you can you not only give us tickets, but can you fly us to the game? Can you pay for our yes. hotel and just everything? And I'm like, woo. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. my son is the NFL player. I'm not. I'm just the mama. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've, I've gotten similar requests um, where people are, again, asking for tickets or they're asking for transportation. Um, you know, even I've had people ask if Paris can purchase them a car. So... <laughs> Yeah. So we've gotten the questions and, and, you know, like I've said in the podcast, I, I'm the bad person in the family. So Paris and my husband and Sydney are the, are the, are the good cops. Monica's the bad cop. Yeah. So I'm always the one that's saying no. Yeah. Someone's got to <laughs> I've do embraced it. it, Tyler. I have embraced it. But yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a really good perspective. Like, you, like the podcast says itself, like, I don't think a lot of people really get to that point or can really understand that side of things i think a lot of people are still thinking hey paris or cj they're probably just telling guys no or they're probably telling people yeah. no it's no it's you guys are not right. only handling everything else you've also the family dynamic you've also got to deal with the the lines of communication coming from all over so it's it's a very interesting really fun dynamic i mean i just go back to when i was a kid and my mom would take me to practices and all that stuff and just Aww. thinking of what she was going through oh. in her head yeah, taking yeah. me to all these things so it's right. really cool to hear you guys kind of say this at a pro level. So I guess, is there anything else uh, that I might have missed that you guys really are excited about? Maybe some upcoming episodes, some sneak peeks you want to give people some teases? You know, I, I just kind of going back over what we were just talking about. I think that's a great thing about the Moms POV show is that people don't know what you don't tell them. So you don't know yes. what you don't know, right? So like, I, when I was the one from the outside looking in and I seen other pro players, I used to think the same thing. So like, honestly, I didn't know. So now that that shoe's on the other foot now, now I can see. And so now it's my, I feel like it's the mom's POV show. It's myself and Monica's kind of what we really are dedicated to doing is now letting people be in the know, kind of just yeah. to know, like, um, how things kind of go, you know, and I think that helps the next mom who won't be shocked by it, surprised by it, saddened by it, because a lot of things make you sad or feel like they're out of the norm. But this is something that a lot of different families deal with. And that's not just with, you know, pro level, but even um, some of the upcoming episodes like uh, recruitment, yes. you know, um, which is a huge one for parents because, you know, 
if your child's highly sought after, there's so many schools and then agents and then marketing and then NIL now. And, and so me and Monica were so blessed to be in every single one of those spaces. So mm -hmm. I think NIL has evolved a little bit now, but we were able to be in the space to kind of know a little yes. bit about it. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's it's a whole new dynamic now. And yeah, the recruiting thing, I think that alone could be huge, huge help. Yeah. People because that's <laughs> just, uh, I, I couldn't even I can't even wrap my head around it. I've got two kids now. I just we have uh -huh. an eight week eight week year old boy and a three year old girl. Oh, but uh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I can't even begin to wrap my head around any kind of recruiting yeah. or the trail or any of yeah, that. That's that's a I'm definitely going to be tuning into that one because I want to hear all about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tuning, I, I want to turn a little bit to football. I got you guys here, so I want to talk a little bit about football. Okay. Uh, Monica, how, yeah. how are we feeling right now? I know the Cardinals are on this uh, little bit of a losing skid. Paris had a, had a little bit of a rough showing there, a couple penalties. You know, what, what do you say to pick him up and, and kind of keep him going the rest of the sweat? Now, that's a great question um, for me is after the game, let me just say this, even when there's a win, and I believe Kim could, uh, will agree with me, even after a win or a loss, Paris is always that one that's going to come off the field and talk about what he did wrong. Yeah. Even if they won the game, it's like, mom, I could have did this differently. Mm -hmm. And so Paris is the first one to take a look at himself, reevaluate himself mm -hmm. and willing to carry it. He never puts the responsibility of the win or the loss on anyone. It's mm -hmm. always about what could I have done differently? What can I do better? Um, and my job is to number one, remind him that he is healthy. So I, yeah. I said, let's celebrate the small victories. Yes. He's able to walk off the field. Yeah. And then the second thing is, is that I remind him that it's a team sport. And especially when you're playing offensive line, which is one of the unique positions, is if it's one person on the line, they it's off. Everything is off. Yeah. And so all five have to function as one unit, right. yeah. one unit. And they have to be in sync. They have to be in rhythm. And so just being there to support him through that and reminding him it doesn't matter if they win, if they lose. His mama loves him. His mom's going to rock with the Cardinals. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So Cardinals going to always have a special place in his mama's heart. So, so yeah. just reminding him we're in this thing together and just celebrate the victories. Look at what you need to reevaluate and make those adjustments. Put them in your toolbox and start all over again tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> well said. <laughs> you can really, uh, what, what are you seeing out of CJ this year? Maybe uh, what's, what's he's improved upon? Uh, I know there, I know Nico Collins, that was kind of a rough uh, injury to get through there, but now he's back. Yeah. So seems like things should be turning around there. Like, wh wh where are you seeing CJ take that next step? Yeah, you know, something for me, Tyler, is I had to realize this is my son's career now. Mm -hmm. So it's not college anymore where at college, I was like, okay, three, four years, we're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, the Texas, Texans and Houston and football there. This is our home now. And this is my son's career. So it's kind of like, I always try to help, help people understand. Like when we go to work, you know, um, every day isn't where your boss is like, you did such a great job and everything was so great today. There's days where you could have did better. Maybe something didn't go, the a deal didn't close or something didn't go so well. So that's right. the same thing as our, our, our sons. They're at work. And, and, and when you're at work, some days go well, some days don't. But I always tell CJ, we win as a team, we lose as a team. So regardless if it, if there's one thing one person did, every everybody, we all are in this together. And I think that's the beauty of, um, I see the Texans, when I we first got to the Texans, I felt like very, like everyone was very disconnected from each other. There wasn't a lot of collaboration in my mind. I, I just, when I looked down at the bench, I'd be like, ooh. But then I, you know, over, over time and this year, it's like, they, they love each other and they're, you know, they're giving each other support and they're making sure when one play didn't go well for someone, they'll go and they'll talk to each other. It's just a totally different culture. And I think it takes time to build that. Like, you know, so I always remind CJ, like these great teams that are out there, they took years to get there, but you're only in your second year. Like, <laughs> you know, there's so much more football to play. And I think, like after games, um, the players, especially when we lose, everybody's so sad. And I'm sad too, but when I give them a hug and 
you know I'm like you did so I'm proud of you you know and they would they always say yeah but we lost I say, yeah but um I, I always tell them like we might have lost but there's a lot more football to play and all every single player I've ever said that to is like yeah that's right there's all there's more football to play so that's kind of what I relay over to CJ and I've been told the only thing I'm missing uh, when I talk to other players is oranges <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that is good. Well, that's great. Well, that's great. Well, I, I can't thank you guys enough for stopping by. Uh, again, thank you. Definitely, everybody go check it out. Uh, the Moms POV Podcast. Everywhere you can listen to podcasts, all that, YouTube, Spotify, all yeah. that, right? <laughs> yes. Perfect, perfect. So, yeah, definitely go check that out. Thank you again to Monica Daniels and Kimberly Stroud. Thank you for having us. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Happy guys. holidays. Happy <laughs> holidays to you, too. And thanks for everybody for tuning in. I'm Tyler Drake with Cardinals Corner. We'll catch you guys next time.